Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. We have a honey production colony here. It looks pretty small and that's because it is. And I have a nucleus colony over here that is a byproduct of this strong colony. So what I have is a box of foundation with a drawn comb from last season. And what this is going to do is really pull these bees up into this foundation. As you can see, they've already put a little bit of nectar down into this comb. And as they build new wax where our uncapper cut it down, as they build that new wax, they are going to be a lot quicker at attacking this foundation here. And I have got a really good coat of wax on this, which makes a big difference. You know, we have a short honey flow here. And so, and honey comes in, nectar comes in fast. And so we don't want them to take their sweet time about it. We need them to get that drawn quickly. I'll be putting another box of drawn comb on maybe today. So this has not been on here, but about 10 days. And I'm curious to see if they've done anything with this. And also we're gonna go down to the brood nest and see if they have started building swarm cells. This isn't the biggest colony. We used to keep colonies a lot bigger than this, but I like to pull them back now to make nukes and also just get rid of that swarm tendency. It's really hard to tell with this yellow foundation but this is being drawn out right here this is this is really good so that's what i want to see i want a lot of new honey supers let's see if we have anything stored up into here if we do and we do yes so check that out right there they're starting to draw this yeah there we go so that's excellent. We need to get another drawn super onto here. And typically I'd already have two onto this one, but I pulled this one out of the, one of the long Langstroth hives that we had over here. I hit it with the mower a while back and I needed to do a little bit of work to it. And so I just dropped it down into some regular equipment. There you go, B, enjoy. So let's get down to where that queen's at. Yeah, there's a little bit of weight in there, not a ton but I'd say probably about two medium frames worth, three, something like that. And we have just pulled these bees back. We have the black locust, the blackberry, the tulip poplar still on the way, the privet, basswood, clover, all that's still to come. And so these bees should feel like they've already swarmed to a degree because I pulled them back so much. And they won't be on the ground like this forever. I just did that temporarily so I am seeing a lot of weight in this end frame right here this is just packed full of honey and man that looks like a yeah there's an egg in there that one's dry these are queen cups and the nice thing is though with this hive I only have 10 frames to go through and that is just full of food early on when we set these up we just don't want these colonies to backfill. We want them to commit to this right here. Once they really commit to drawing that foundation and to placing that nectar up into the combs above the excluder, and they've already started, they're really good about keeping this clear. But when this comb, box of comb goes on first or two boxes of comb, they have to work it a little bit. Uh, sometimes it takes just a little bit of time for them to really go to that excluder and accept it. And it, even if that's just three days, if you have buckets of nectar coming in those three days, well, that plugs out the brood nest and they swarm. So when you put them into a single brood management system like this, if you have the time getting back there can, and checking can really be helpful until they've really committed to placing that nectar above and also to clearing out this brood nest space. All right, so we are seeing some cups down in here, they are elongating these cups. Woo, yeah, swarm tendency. If we find any that are capped, we'll probably just use this for a queen rearing colony. While we're doing this, we need to look for the queen and see if we can find her because if she is, uh, if they are wanting to swarm and we do have capped cells, then we would want to take that queen and move her to a different location. Now, maybe you're wanting to make a split and you're like, Cayman, could I use these cells? Absolutely. Don't crush them like I did. And this would be a great frame to take. Take a couple 
more frames that one of food, this one, another frame of brood, a shake or two of extra of bees because this hive will keep all the foragers. Put this in a nuke box, shake a little bit of extra bees to make sure that you have plenty of coverage to keep that brood warm. And don't come back for about three weeks. And about 21 days later, come back and you should have a laying queen if the cells are capped or really darn close to it. So I don't see the queen, but we definitely have the beginnings of swarming going on and I've got royal jelly all over me. It's a little windy today, but uh, we just had so much rain lately and we really needed it. Good frame of brood right here. You can see where they're putting nectar down into here. I really think if we can get this colony before they've capped any cells, and we'll see where we're at on that, we can put in a frame of drawn comb or two down into here, clear some space, and maybe keep them into honey production. So not seeing the queen. Usually I'm a little fast, too fast at looking for the queen. Probably spend a little bit more time. Oh, there she is right there. So she's laying. And I'm seeing where they're drawing these out right here. So I really want to go grab a nuke. That's what I'm going to do really fast. Let's place her right here. Just hold that thought. Spend some time with Laurel. Laurel, talk to the folks. Okay, now we can do our work without fear of losing the queen, damaging the queen, or anything like that. You stick them off to the side in the grass and sometimes they just disappear. She's going to place her over here. Now, Laurel, don't let me forget to put her back in. So now we can be really quick here and just shake this off. And we're going to be looking for those queen cups. Even if it's one that doesn't look like there's anything in it, we're probably going to go ahead and remove it in this case because this is swarm season. This is in their system. Swarming, everything the bees do, it's all about stimuli, right? Right now that is going. And we've got to curb that. And I have taken bees from this colony, but this strong nectar flow is really getting them to think about it. All right, so check this cell out right here. Just full of jelly. It's a great time of the year to raise some queens. And we're gonna show you a new one here in a second. I told Laurel this wouldn't be a long video, but uh, well, here we are. But we had just put this in single brood like 10 days ago. Now I should have had the honey supers on earlier than that, but I'm running a little bit behind. Woo! Look at that. That one's almost capped right there. Wowie. So I am going to remove those. And we're going to come back into this colony in about three or four, probably four days from now, and do the same thing. We've got to keep them from wanting to swarm. So one of the things when you have to watch out for when you don't have plastic foundation, like on this side, you can't hardly see it, but there's a gap there where this is wax foundation, and they create these gaps sometimes in the wax foundation. So on this flip side, we have a cup down in there, and you wouldn't think they could raise a queen down in there, but sometimes they definitely do. So we are going to crush that because it's all, it's, all it takes is missing one of them, and they cap it. 
And I think there's another one on the other side. This is another reason why, yeah, here we go. Another reason why a lot of people like plastic foundation is it creates that solid consistency and it's easier. So there's that one. And we are good to go on this one. I'm going to zip through this really fast. And then we'll see you here in a second. Okay, so we have gone through, we've cut all the cells out. We caught them before they capped anything, so we're gonna give the queen back to this colony. We also are going to take all of the edge combs, which are just full of bee bread and honey, which is great, but we're in the middle of our flow. There's food up in the honey super. We need to clear some space down in here and get through that period. I don't want to split them anymore. I've already pulled them back enough. We want them to focus on building up and making honey. We need to come back here. I'm going to come back in four days and we are going to cut any cells if that's still in their system. We will see it. They won't have capped them yet. And usually after two times, this time and the next time cutting them, it's out of their system, especially when you can give them some drawn combs that have a lot of space. So the queen could lay in these, and that's great if she does, but even if they just take the bee bread and the nectar that would be deposited in here and place it on the wall, that'll still free up that inner space that she needs. A little tidbit right here is we have this dead out comb, and there's a little bit of mold on it and some brew. This, uh, this looks like Varroa to me, and uh, we, we could talk about that for a while. Let's do that in another video, but this is okay. This, this comb is not damaged. It's not that old. Some people like burn it, throw it out, all that kinds of stuff. This is my comb. I know what's been in this stuff. Perfectly fine to use. This isn't enough damage to warrant doing anything with other than placing it back into the colony and letting this hive clean it out. And they will do a wonderful job of it and use it in very short order. Maybe if we come back and do a follow-up video on this, we'll show you what that comb looks like. Now we're going to place this other drawn comb on this edge. And it's a little fat there. We're gonna trim that off. We don't wanna crush any bees if possible. It happens. All right. Now we need to get our queen back. Make sure that we cut all of the cells off of it this frame let's see if we can find that queen again now this is where some people would either before or after they would clip the queen's wing one of them or parts of both of them and we just have never done that before I know guys that do breeding that do and that prevents the queen being able to fly off um, we're definitely not going to do that today, but let's see here. I don't see her on this side. Let's see if she is on the other side. There she is, right in the center. She's still quite fat, which is good. We just need to get her down there and keep her busy laying. I'm never good at backhanding that. There we go, like come at her from like this. I really hate these valves, Laurel. This glare is just... Well. There we go. Alright, so there's the queen. Now we are going to shake this off. And that's, that's not rough on the bees to shake it like that. We are just going to make sure all these are cut down. Can't miss a one. There we 
get on out of there. So there we go. That's single brood inspection. Maybe we can do a follow-up video on this one. Um, any of the bees that are on these food frames, just shake those bees back in there as well. I know we have good sunny days coming up. I know we have some honey weight up top. If we were to get like seven bad days and take that much of their food, it could pose a problem to this colony. You, that's where it's so important to know your flows and to really pay attention to your weather. Know your plants. I know what I can get away with right now. I know what's coming. These blackberries are budding out. There's so much on the way. If I did this at other times of the year, this could be disastrous. You just gotta know what to do. And that's part of the joy and the sometimes frustration of new beekeeping is learning all this new stuff. And there's a lot to learn. Don't be discouraged though. Be excited about learning, not only about bees, but learning about the plants and your local area. Okay, that's got a, some weight, it's got the excluder on it. I wanna show you this nuke over here just really fast. Now, you're probably wondering, Cayman, I've always heard to put the foundations closer to the brood chamber because that's better for them to draw in. And that is true, but early on, I want to put the combs close to the brood chamber so they just quickly get that honey up into there. Once we come back, and I'm going to add another super to this that's a drawn comb, we are going to eventually rotate this foundation down towards the bottom of this hive lean those here for now okay always put these frames back together unless you want a mess let's this nuke right here is part used to be part of this colony so it's being treated and let's see how they're doing. This is a new queen. I'm gonna stand over here so I don't shade everything too much. And let's, they've got a good bit of weight. When I made it up though, I gave them a frame of food and that looks really good. Little colonies, especially in early spring, eat a lot. A lot of temperature fluctuations, takes a lot to keep them heated up. Okay. All right, we got a nice brood pattern right here. We have got uh, capped brood. We have eggs, young larvae. We have eggs all over this side. We have their treatment right there. Killing mites, so whenever we sell this to somebody, they'll have a nice clean nuke. And we just brood all down in there. So a really nice little nucleus colony for somebody. Coming on up. Let's check one more frame and then I'm gonna let you all go. Yeah, there we go. So this queen has never seen a queen cage. She was mated in this hive right here. And this hive is only like this because of its mother colony down into here. This is what I like to see. I like to get 80 pounds of honey off of this production hive in one nucleus colony. And if I can get that off of a production hive, that's pretty good. And in Tennessee, we're not known for big honey crops or necessarily big new can be production, but you can do that here if you manage your bees well through July, August, and September. A little TLC goes a long way. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.